Hey you guys, how you doing? What is going on? This is, uh, this would be video three in the series. Uh, first day we made flat shapes and that's good. Second day we took those shapes and ex we took those flat shapes and extruded them up. We turned circles into cylinders, we turned squares into cubes, we turned triangles into prisms. Today we're going to take those flat shapes and we're going to taper them into other kinds of forms. What's important about that is the thinking that goes into what's happening with the taper. I really quickly need to get us back to a starting point because if you can see, where is it? If you can see over here, there's the things I built the other day. So I need to quickly make circles, squares, and triangles. I'll do it quick. I'll be right back. So when we were doing a straight extrusion, we took the width of the side here, and then we just brought that up. And then the width of this side and just brought that up. So we brought these straight up to do a straight up and down extrusion. What we're going to do now is more fun. We're going to call this our start point. So we're going to start here. And we're going to end here. So we have considerably different sizes. And this is just a math game. This is really easy. So if we measure this carefully, if we measure this carefully, we can see it's, you see it? Yeah. It's an inch and five eighths by an inch and three eighths. Those numbers are a little annoying, but let's write it down. So we have an inch and five eighths, and we have an inch and three eighths. Okay, and the sides on the big one are four inches by three and seven eighths. Four inches and three and seven eighths. Okay, so those are our numbers that matter. That, that's what matters. Good, so follow the logic here. So what we want to do is we want to connect this corner up to this corner and this corner up to this corner. We know how wide it is here. We know how wide it is here. All we need to determine now is how long do we want this distance to be? We could have it very short. We could have that be, um, you know, two inches. We could have it very tall and we could make it, you know, six inches. That will control how big of a taper we get. It, it's basically a connect the dots thing. Here's how I would do it. What do I want to do? I'm going to use this. I'm going to write the word base on here. So we know that's going to be our base. And this piece we know is going to fold up. All right, that kind of makes sense, right? We're going to go from there up to there. So ultimately we know we want that to be there top. Basically this is what we want. This needs to touch here and that needs to touch there. So we just need to get rid of those triangles. So, and with practice, this will get easier. And I'll do the same on the other side. And if you find things moving around too much on you, use a little piece of tape to hold it in place. All right, does that make sense? Let's just go through one and then I'll do the others faster. Now, if we do this right, and the skinny joint across there, we turn it sideways, and now we have a start to a tapered form. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing here, 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 and then we'll put the whole thing together. Okay, so I'm gonna do this faster. It'll probably be a time lapse. Get ready for it. And now hopefully if we fold it, yeah, good. We start to get a rectangular pyramid. So I'll fold up two sides, tape that joint together. 
And admittedly, this is rough right now and there's ways to do it cleaner. But until you're used to working with it, what I want you to do, more so than having the world's best craftsmanship, which I care about, is is getting the concept in your head. Like if the why of this makes sense, then the rest of it will fall into place. The rest of it will be easy. If why we choose the bottom length and why we choose the top length makes sense, then you, yeah, anything is possible. Now hopefully this will sit on top beautifully and it does. Cool. So we put the top on. If you're a tape person like me, we're just gonna go around and hold that in place. And take your time with it. Do good cuts, like make it look nice. And some of the things people submitted today, some of the craftsmanship was a little shoddy. And again, while it's not the end all be all right now, if you're gonna do the work, do the work nicely. A basic ta tapered rectangular pyramid right here. That's, that's what you would do. The three things you have to consider are how wide is the bottom, how wide is the top, and how tall do you want it to be? Those are the things that will make this thing more interesting. Okay, we're gonna do a tapered extrusion on a um, equilateral triangle because of things I didn't think about before. So, give me a second. Let's make a equilateral triangle. So here's the deal. We're gonna call this an equilateral triangle. What we want to do now is have have this come up to a point in space. As long as the base is the same on all three sides, you just need to choose how tall you want it to go. I'm going to be super basic right now, and since this is equilateral, I'm going to have the height be the same as the width. So I'm just going to use this as a template and cut three more. So let's do that real quick. Now, if we did it right, all four of these triangles should be the same, do you think? Let's see, and yeah, nice. Uh, now it should be, hopefully, 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 we'll see, um, it should be super basic. So we'll have our center one, and then, let's make this look really nice. So um, I'm gonna put the stripes on the inside so the outside looks clean. We're gonna do that, and if you can see the little gap there, it's probably because my cut, I didn't have the razor super straight up and down, my bad. We're gonna do an inside hinge here, and then we're just gonna work our way out, and then, you ready? You ready? 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 So we're gonna bring these two up to touch. Tape around. Bring these. Oh, sweet. And that's that's a really quick way of making a pyramidal form. And had we cut the side, you know, had we cut the sides higher, it would have just been more tall and spiky. With an extrusion and a taper, so long as the base lines up, whatever you do up in space, that's entirely up to you. Cool, all right, I'm pretty pretty psyched about that. All right, so let me be honest with you. What I wanted to do was to, to like make a cone, but I don't know how to do that. And then the other shapes we did, we never did the straight extrusion on this, but what that would be, it would be the same as the circle. So let's do that really quickly. Okay, we need to extrude our, our shaped forms from the first video because I never did that yesterday. It really shouldn't be hard, I don't think. So here's my take on this. What I need to do is I need to find how long the edge is. And while we could do circumference on the circle, it's kind of harder with a, with a non-normative form. So my method for finding the edge on this would to just be, would to be use a wire. So what I would do is I'm gonna line it up to the point because that's easiest. And then I'm just gonna kind of trace the wire along the edge, holding it down, running it all the way. And you could do this with string, I tried to do it with tape to a greater or lesser level of success, but just hold the wire down all the way around until you get to the point. So we know that the edge is from here to here. When I measure that, I find that it's about 19 and a half inches. Depending on how high I want the extrusion to go, I'll cut a strip to that height. I'm gonna measure down to 19 and a half inches, which is here. And maybe I'll just make a low extrusion. We'll go up three inches, three. I'm gonna measure up three, connect those dots. Excellent. And now we'll just cut it out 
super carefully. And it, it seems like crazy long for the size of that shape, but I don't know. I believe it. I'm getting to the edge of my mat, so. Sweet. So the difficulty, what is up with my phone? All right. The difficulty I'm seeing is it's going to be hard to bend it this way. When we did the cylinder, we could bend it around the ridges and it bent okay. This isn't gonna do that. I think I'm gonna try and pre-roll it on something cylindrical and smaller. A Red Bull cam would have been perfect. I just have this container, so I'm just going to put it down and use that to help us help us roll it. Essentially what it's doing is making evenly spaced creases. That's a great way to start. So now you can see we have some bends. Um, I really do wish I had a tighter, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Got Santi's mallet hand, no, it's about the same size. Oh, I got it, I got it. I found this, which is an old lathe tool, so that'll work. Cool. So now we have a tighter curve that sort of almost approximates what we're doing. But we're gonna need to do a back bend, so I'm going to roughly back bend it the other way. And again, I'm just making this up. I've never done this before, so this is what makes sense to me. If you try something that's not what I told you you should do and it works, good for you, that's awesome. So basically, I'm gonna ready a whole bunch of little pieces of tape to hold it in place to kind of like tack it together while I go. Yeah, for a first attempt at an extruded form, I'm okay with that, that's not bad. And then what we should be able to do is come over and cap it Now we have an extruded organic form. And that's all I want you to do for today. Extrude a square up into a, um, a pyramid, extrude the triangle up into uh, a pyramid, and take your free form and make a more complicated extruded solid out of that. I think that's enough. That is gonna do it for today. I do, I do wonder about you guys, like, I'm not getting as many people doing the work as I had hoped for, but um, I hope you're doing well. I hope your life is good and you're feeling good and this is interesting for you. I think this has the potential to go really good places. What my goal for this week has been to, to get us comfortable with the material, get us comfortable with techniques and get us thinking about this. Next week we'll start doing more complicated things with cardboard so that we can eventually work to making things that are cool and not just something that feels like a time filler for you. So take your time with this. Do, do as good a job as you can and I'll start showing you images next week of what people have done with cardboard that, that makes it really, really cool. I think with that, I'm gonna say goodbye. Wish you guys a good weekend and uh, yeah, stay safe, make good choices and I will see you soon. Okay, bye.